Jean Linneval from Jean Linneval Tutoring. And here's a little last minute advice on what you should bring and what you should not bring to the SAT. I'm looking at the collegereadiness.collegeborg.org slash SAT checklist, blah, blah, blah. So this is the official College Board website. So first you want to print your admission ticket. Make sure you have that. You can't get into the test center without it. And then bring the admission ticket with you. I'd say print out a couple copies, maybe put one in your pants pocket, put one something else that you carry with you. Acceptable photo ID, let's click on that. Okay, so they want you to bring an unexpired photo ID that's government issued or issued by your school. Um, and okay, it has to be an original document and not be at all photocopied. It should have your full legal name on it and it should bear a recent recognizable photograph of you and be written in English and clearly legible. Okay, so now that we know that, you should bring two number two pencils with erasers. I would suggest bringing five or six just in case. That way if the tips break off or you'll have lots of them. You can use one as kind of the ruler for the ruler trick for diagrams that are drawn to scale. Um, so you can figure out things that are uh, hard to find out without measuring with something. So also you should bring a watch or a little timer. You can go to a hardware store or Target or Walmart or probably any drugstore and just get a little two, three dollar little, you know, stick on kind of clock things you can time yourself or bring a watch that doesn't have an audible alarm they're not going to let you bring in anything that makes noise you can bring extra batteries and or backup equipment i assume they mean another calculator but you'll have to ask for permission to access them so that means they probably hold on to them or you'll have to ask and be able to reach under your desk um, you could bring a bag or a backpack to keep your stuff in a drink or snacks for your break and of course, you should eat breakfast before you arrive if you normally eat breakfast in the morning. If you don't eat breakfast in the morning, I don't know if that's such a great idea to eat breakfast, but in any event, don't eat a humongous breakfast so you're logy and weighed down and tired and your body's trying to take a little nap to digest all the food. Just a little breakfast to give you some energy. So don't bring anything like a digital watch or anything that can record, transmit, receive, playback, audio. Um, that means you're not going to be able to bring your cell phone. That means you can't bring any kind of audio player other than the CD player that they've talked about in the language with listening subject tests. Don't bring a laptop, a notebook, Google Glass, any other kind of recording device. Don't bring your iPod. Don't bring any other MP3 player. Don't bring an iPad, any other tablet. Anything electronic other than a digital watch with no alarm is a no-no. Oh, or of course, your calculator. So you want to make sure that you have an approved calculator. Let's look at the calculator again. <clears throat> Here we go. You should bring your own calculator. They won't let you share a calculator with somebody. Um, they have calculators listed on this page here, which is collegedreadiness.collegeborg.org, SAT, forward slash, uh, taking the test, forward slash calculator policy. Don't bring a brand new one. Bring one you know, and that's good advice. It may help to do some scratch work in the test book, so you can write the, you know, write down the formula and set it up before you use your calculator. Uh, okay, the test center will not have batteries or extra calculators for you. It's an important life lesson. I mean, assume that nobody's going to have anything for you to borrow, or even if they have it, that they won't let you borrow it. Uh, that'll get you a lot further in life. So... You can't use calculators for any subject test other than the ones in mathematics where you're allowed to use them. And okay, so most graphing calculators are allowed, all scientific calculators, all four function calculators, but they say don't really bring those. Okay, so you can look and check out Casio, Hewlett Packard, Radio Shack, Sharp, okay, TI. So all right, so it looks like other calculators, okay. So you can't bring a laptop, a computer, anything that lets you access the internet, have wireless, Bluetooth, cellular, anything that has a typewriter like keypad or pen input or a stylus, anything that uses an electrical outlet, makes noise, or has a paper tape. 
or the calculator function on a mobile phone, which is what I normally use for a calculator. But you can't do it because obviously you could text somebody. And also the reason they don't want anything that records is because these are all copyrighted. So they don't want you violating their copyright. And of course they don't want you showing to other people what is on the test. Let's say someone's taking it in Guam and you're taking it in California or you're taking it in New York and someone's taking it in California. If you can take a picture, you can probably send those pictures to somebody before they're even starting the test. Let's not play that game. Let's not get accused of playing that game. So don't bring any unacceptable calculator or electronic device. Okay, so other than that, if you bring or use a prohibited device, they can collect and hold your phone. Uh, they can deny admission to anyone. So that's an awful lot of discretion in the hands of somebody who may or may not know what they're doing, may or may not like you. They may have a personal problem against you. Um, they may have had a bad experience around this. So you could end up just with someone holding onto your phone or you could end up not being allowed to take the test. You can be kicked out of the test if you're caught using a prohibited device or if it makes noise. Wow, those are pretty serious consequences. So as they say here, better yet, just leave those things at home. You know, you don't want any kind of electronic device to be within your reach. Um, other things than that, I'd say if you are taking the test at a high school or at a location that is not where you go to school, Make sure that you know how to get there. You can go to Google Maps and print it out. You can put it on your phone, which of course then you'll have to give to whoever drops you off there or whatever. Basically, you wanna make sure you know how to get there. You should make sure that you get up in time that you can walk or take transit in case your car breaks down. And that's about all I have to say about that. Oh, one other thing I guess is, Make sure you get a good night's sleep. Staying up till 11 or midnight or later than that doing practice tests is just going to be counterproductive. So do a little bit of practice the night before, but mostly just get some sleep. Okay, that's all I have to say for right now.